know, best practice we've had this season. They were great. Um, change of pace, change of place, change of perspective. I'm not just getting them out of here, getting them away from us. Uh, their pace slowing down a little bit, getting a Saturday to themselves. You can tell it was good for them. And uh, they came back in and really attacked it and had a great, really great practice. Our best one of the season. What's the uh, overall health heading into this part of the season for the team? Uh, we, you know, we had those guys that were already out for the season, and we're, we're all beat up, but uh, we got some time away. for Anybody that was injured or beat up, you know, they did not practice uh, Wednesday and Thursday, so some of those guys were back out there for the first time Sunday night. Greg? Jeff, can you take us through a little more detail? How did you structure the practice schedule last week, kind of balancing the wanting time off versus continuing to work on certain things? Uh, Monday, we just did nothing but self-scout UTSA, which is normally the day we'd prepare for Rice. Tuesday, we took that day to prepare for Rice. So Wednesday uh, was Tuesday's practice, and Thursday was Wednesday's practice, and then uh, we did not practice Friday um, or Saturday. And the kids were back in on Sunday, which would be normally a day we'd be uh, reviewing the game film and passing out triangle T-shirts, and instead we practiced um, which would have been the Thursday practice the week before, but it was a Sunday. Did you get all that? It's tough on guys to sort of have to balance the, uh, the mental aspect of sitting with a loss for an extra week, or how did they handle the mental part of this whole thing? Yeah, that's the worst. There's nothing worse than losing during bye week. You get half a month, everybody telling you how stupid you are. Same as I have since I've been here every year that Mike's been there. Uh, they do a lot. Uh, they, they know what kind of players they have, and they do a really good job of asking their players to do what they do well. Uh, defensively, you know, the coordinator's been there the entire time, and he knows what he's doing. And he, he knows what he asks his kids to do, and uh, they're a pain to deal with. Offensively, they do a ton of stuff, and uh, they're, they're a pain. And I know it looks like we've beaten them, which we have since we've been here, but you know, last year the score was 10 to 7 at halftime. I mean, it's it was a, a heck of a battle, and it always has been. Mike's teams always fight. This is seventh season there, which is unbelievable in college football that anybody can make it somewhere seven years. So we have a lot of respect for their program. I think you guys are a five-point favorite. I know you don't look at that much, but what's your reaction to being a, a road favorite after, you know, the struggles your team has had this season? I literally give it zero thought whatsoever. If it wasn't for J.J. Perez telling me every week, I, it would never be discussed in my life. But since you ask, um, okay, it's whatever. Uh, Vanderbilt beat Alabama, right? So enough said. Great. Jeff Rice's defense has been able to create a lot of sacks and tackles for loss this year. What do you see as the keys to them creating so many negative plays that you have to look out for? Yeah, their D lineman is really good. Number five, the kids are he's a train wrecker. Uh he's really good. They just uh they're they're some they're top twenty five in the country, some thirty, uh defensively. Um it's pretty phenomenal, honestly, the success they've had defensively and uh, uh they're ranked a lot higher than us, uh for sure, uh on defense. I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, but TFLs, they might be five or six in the country. Sacks, they're very high up there as well. And we're not very good in that department. Uh, we've given up a lot of TFLs, and we've given up a lot of sacks. Now, we've kind of cleaned that up lately, but uh, for the whole season, I would say that's been a weakness of ours. As you alluded to, you guys have had some strong results against Rice in your tenure. What do you see when you look back at these previous matchups that has contributed to that success? Uh, just good team football. I mean, usually we play them later in the year, so we're more a polished version of what you see early in the year for us. Um, but I see a, a team in them that always scraps and fights, gets after us, gets us a, their, their pain. Are those past results something that can be a source of confidence for your guys at all, or does that not come up as you talk about this matchup this week? We don't. Uh, we we just know we've gotten better each week, and I know it's hard for you guys to see that, but we know as a team we have gotten better. It's just very important for us to have our sixth game in a row get better, and uh, 
We just need some confidence. We need to go out and play well in all three phases one time so our kids have some confidence. When you look at Owen McCown specifically, what stands out about his development process with just about a half a season under his belt? What differences do you see from the start of the year? Just comfort, you know, and knowing the offense and checks and balances. I mean, very similar to Frank's learning curve. What did it say about Jamal Ligon in particular last week? I saw he was out there with a cast on his hand. He still played a pretty strong game. What did that show you about him? Nothing we hadn't seen for five straight years. The kid, would, he'll play. If the training staff will find a way to get him out there, he's going to play. He seemed like he was in some pass rushing positions maybe more than we've seen in previous games in his career. How have you seen him just continue to grow and sort of add to what he does on the field just like on in his college tenure? Yeah, I, I would agree with your assessment. I think he's twitchy. Uh, he competes so hard. Uh, he just finds a way to get home. Uh, even the Tulane game last year, you know, that sack he caused late, you know, in the, in the second quarter, got us back in the ball game, caused a fumble. He's shown, you know, uh, at times in his career to be able to do that for us. And I think you would continue to see him uh, flourish in that role. Jeff, what's the overall, I guess, mental state of your team? How would you say your team is, uh, how they're at? As good as I've ever seen them. They're like always. They're rock solid. If I was a business, I'd hire them. They're, they know how to handle adversity. Winning's hard. Uh, we, we're, we're very spoiled at UTSA. Coaching staff, players, fan base, media, all of us are very spoiled. It's hard to win college football games, uh, especially at this level. Uh, it's not the same as it used to be. And um, it's a uh, each year is a very it's a, each year is a brand new year, obviously more so than ever before, as you can tell by all the upsets. And um, so our kids are having to deal with some adversity, you know, for two years in a row, and it'll be interesting to see how we respond. I think our best football is in front of us. I like where our culture of our team is. If we can catch some breaks with some health, I think there's a lot of good football in front of us. When you say that uh, Sunday was one of your best practices of the year, if not the best, what are you seeing that, that leads you that way? Like, what do you look forward to make that assessment? No, just their energy in the team meeting, their energy when they take the field, their energy in the stretch line. But sometimes with all that energy and passion comes a lot of mistakes. Uh, but you had juice, we were buttoned up, kids were having a blast, they were knocking the heck out of each other. They were just in a really good frame of mind. Uh, and then sometimes when you're a coach, you, you think – you know, because the, the weather was beautiful and you think because everybody was happy and smiling and running around and we executed some plays that you had a good practice and you watch the video and there's tons of mistakes. And it wasn't. It was a, it was a clean video. Uh, we were just clean. We were clean, excited. Uh, you'd think we're a 5-0 and football team if you came out there and watched this practice last night. We saw against East Carolina, Zay Frazier had a pretty big game. What have you seen from his development this year and really through his tenure here? Just him stacking days. I know y'all want some crazy, sexy answer, but it's just nothing more than work, man. Life's hard. Football's hard. You got to work. You got to stack. You got to keep putting in days. And uh, Zay has just done that. You know, his time here, he just continues to put in days. And uh, really excited for him to have a breakout game. And I hope he can, you know, stack that and go back to back. Are there things he does now or ways that he's sharper on the field because of that daily effort? What changes has that led to for him? His confidence. He wouldn't even have gone for that interception two years ago. He'd have stayed back, let him catch the ball, and made the tackle and been happy he did that. Now, you know, he knows he can make that play. So I would expect y'all to see him make more of those. You told us last week that sort of part of the process through this open week was going to take a look at which guys have showed up and might deserve a little bit more opportunity. Is there anything you can highlight? You know, somebody who's jumped out and might uh, be placed to make a big, big step down the stretcher? Yeah, there are a few of them, uh, but we'll, we'll keep that between us and the Roadrunners. We don't want to help Mike in any way. They got two weeks over there to get ready for us. I don't want him to – he's watching my interviews, I'm watching his. I mean, it's just part of the deal. I'd love to answer the question, Greg, but it just wouldn't be very smart for the Roadrunners to tell them who guys are going to be appearing on the scene more Saturday than they have the last few Saturdays. And the other thing you mentioned last week was the red zone offense. What do you see when you evaluate like, that area for UTSA, and what are you guys sort of working on in that regard? Um, you know, we just got to get better in there as far as, you know, quarterback, receiver, time. And there's just not a lot of room for error down there because, you know, they're usually going to be in zero or some type of bracket coverage. 
So the, the throws just have to be so precise. Like Houston's got to make that play. And the, the catch that Oscar made was an unbelievable play down there. Uh, McEwen's got to make that catch in the end zone. You know, Owen's got to uh, put the ball in, you know, in a little bit better spot uh, on, on another one. So, and then just blocking down there. You know, we've got to get a little bit more movement. Uh, and just those kind of things. Just we've got to be better. We got to quit selling for field goals. But we got to get the ball in the end zone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. God bless. Birds up.